if you recognize this background where I'm sitting, then you're a true OG of this channel and you get a point from me. <laughs> Hey cuties and welcome back to my channel for another video. If you want to join the cuties fam, all you're going to do is hit that subscribe button, the like button, and the little bell icon to get notified when I make new videos. All my socials will be linked down below, including my Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Cameo, Patreon, Discord, my podcast. I think that's everything, but any way you can support me will all be linked down below and you know I appreciate that so much. Before we jump into this video, I want to give a big shout out to all of my Patreons. You guys keep this channel running and I know it hasn't been running for quite some time, but we're back baby and uh, you guys have been so loyal and so supportive throughout my very difficult break. So thank you guys so much sending you all of my love. So obviously today is not a very like happy topic to be talking about and definitely not one that I thought that I would ever be reporting on. I remember when we first caught wind in Canada that there was like a possibility of Roe v. Wade being overturned and that was like earlier this year. And I looked at my dad and I was like, there, I will place money on this. There is absolutely no way you can take away that right. Because to me, I was looking at it from a medical standpoint, like not even just, you know, like a woman's right to choose and all of that stuff. Like, obviously I believe in all of that. And I think that's incredibly important too. But even from just like a, a baseline medical standpoint, um, medical abortions are necessary for saving lives. And so just on that thought process, I was like, there's, there's no way that they can take it away. Like there's just... In my mind, it was like a done deal. Like there's just no way you can take a life-saving medical procedure away from human beings. And my dad looked at me and he was like, Christina, like we're, we're talking about the United States here. Like we're not, we're not talking about logical thinking. <laughs> and I was like, true. And then he reminded me of how Trump pushed right before the election to like fast track Amy Coney Barrett to be on the Supreme Court for this specific reason. Like this, it was all leading up to this. Like Trump's presidency was really built around getting something like this done. And the craziest thing to me is if you look at the statistics of like every state in the United States, there is not more than 30% of each state that supports undermining reproductive rights. So the thing is, is that if the majority of each state don't even agree with this. The majority of America as a whole does not agree with this. How does a Supreme Court get to make a decision that your country doesn't agree with? That to me is what is the scariest part of this precedent. And it's also very scary for us here in Canada. If you don't think this is an issue that affects Canadians, it is. Everything that happens in America directly affects us. We, as a country, our conservative party, loves to just like copy and paste everything that happens in the United States. And right now in Canada, we have 89 out of 119 MPs who support undermining reproductive rights. That's a lot. And that's really scary that the majority of MPs are in support of undermining reproductive rights. So it is a likely possibility that the same thing could happen here in Canada. Now, again, I highly doubt that can happen, but I really didn't think it was going to happen in the States either, so uh, I don't know what to tell you. But anyways, let's jump into the video. Um, so if you don't know, if, you don't, if you're like, what the hell is Christina talking about? If you've been living on an alien planet or you're from another country and don't really care about politics here in North America, the Supreme Court in the United States of America decided to overturn Roe v. Wade, which Roe v. Wade basically put in... It as a constitutional right for a woman to have a right to choose um, what happens to a fetus inside of her body. So if she's pregnant, she can decide to terminate that. If there's an atopic pregnancy and they need to save the woman, they can perform a medical abortion, so on and so forth. This is actually the first time in American history that the Supreme Court has taken away a constitutional right. Now, I don't care who you are or what you believe in, that is a scary precedent to set for anyone. When Roe v. Wade initially got overturned, I think 13 states had trigger laws already in place um, to ban abortion or to have severe restrictions. Um, if I'm looking here, it's uh, 
Arkansas, Idaho, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, North Dakota, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, and Wyoming. And even more after that decided on restricting abortion or banning it. Um, But those were the 13 that had immediate trigger laws that went into place. Now it's all done on the state level, right? So each state decides for themselves, but it's really scary that now the government can control what a woman does with her own body. And um, I think that that sets a scary precedent going forward. And I think it also sets a scary precedent in in terms of constitutional rights, because now any constitutional right that's not codified is basically like up in the air. Like, can the Supreme Court just decide to um, take away gay rights, marriage rights, interracial marriage rights, um, if they're not codified, you know? And the Supreme Court doesn't even need the support of the nation, right? Because abortion was not a majority of the United States were not in support of taking away abortion rights. So they're making decisions that don't represent the majority of the country, which is absolutely insane to me. But anyways, I want to start this video off by a very amazing quote by Joan Chittister. I do not believe that just because you're opposed to abortion, that that makes you pro-life. In fact, I think in many cases, your morality is deeply lacking if all you want is a child born but not a child fed, not a child educated, not a child housed. And why would I think that you don't? Because you don't want any tax money to go there. That's not pro-life, that's pro-birth. And amen to that. So let's jump into her video. Hi everybody, I'm gonna let some people tune in here. Um, Boy, it has been a while since I have uh, talked to you guys and done a live stream. It's been at least nine months, I know that. (laughs) in <laughs> some time after. Um, how exciting is it that the first video that I'm doing live or even talking to you guys in is um, about Roe v. Wade being overturned? That is so exciting. The fact that I never thought that I would see this happen in my lifetime and my- Not her being excited. Not her being excited. Like, no, no. <laughs> baby is in the second month of life like and and it happened it happened now this is just insane I'm so excited Um, I can't wait to tell my baby one day about how hard I fought and how hard so many people in this country fought to get this to happen want to say to everybody that I don't think I could write in a Facebook post is that this is not the end this doesn't mean that everything's done and this this is a great first step but this is important because now the states we can elect people at our state levels to abolish abortion this is just the beginning this is this is now where we go to pressure the people at the state level and tell them hey i will say she's correct on that point that this is just the start and i think that's the scariest part about this is that this is just the start. And, you know, there are still a lot of states that allow abortion, but you get the wrong people in office through election. And this is why elections are so important. Trump's presidency was truly, as we can see, the biggest mistake in like US history. (laughs) Okay, maybe not the biggest mistake, but pretty big. Um, Because you can see the power of one president getting three supreme court judges in to have that majority and then for them to vote on things that the country doesn't even agree with and now you see the even i forget his name the supreme court justice he was like we're going after gay marriage next i swear to god the u.s is like actually in the 1950s it's anyways let's keep watching Now we need to abolish it. It needs to be done completely. Like Missouri just did. Missouri just made it illegal. That's amazing. That's the best thing that has happened so far out of this. And I can't wait to see how many states actually take this step. Um, I don't have any hope for New York and California. So uh, just let's just pray for those states. So uh don't even get me started on Missouri. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? In Missouri, doctors now have to wait until a woman is basically on her deathbed, like is about to die, 
in order to intervene. You know, one in 50 women have an atopic pregnancy, a life-threatening atopic pregnancy. Like here, here's a quote from a doctor in Missouri. We are now observing patients with atopic pregnancy and hemoperitoneum. I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Until they have a documented falling hemoglobin or unstable vital signs. So they're basically waiting until a woman is like dying in order to intervene. That's not a positive thing. In what world is that pro-life? It's not, by the way. It's not pro-life. Not only that, but like, I'm pretty sure America has one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the world. And that's two to three times higher for uh, black people who give birth because of medical racism. So the fact that you're making it even harder for women to have safe births is absolutely insane. Like women who actually want to have their babies um, can't even have safe births because you cannot perform medical abortions that are required for specific issues with pregnancy and birth. Anyways, let's keep going. Um, one other thing that I want to mention is that this is the legacy of Donald Trump's presidency. It's, it's not anything that happened during his presidency. Joe Biden is the president. And these amazing rulings from the Supreme Court are happening now. This is what I think this goes to show how important a president is because they can put people at the highest core of our land and the decisions they make will be in effect for you know decades to come and the fact that we just had a very very great ruling about concealed carry and carry permits and you know the right to carry a firearm to protect yourself and then the next day we have a pro-life ruling and these are people who came from donald trump that's amazing this is his legacy and his presidency um, you know, gas prices sure are high right now, but it doesn't seem so bad when you know that. She did not just bring up firearm rulings in the same video as, a, as she's pro-life in it right up. I think the, the contradictions, the duality of these people, they're just two opposing thoughts at the same time. They're like, I'm so pro-life. Let's protect life. It's so precious. It's so, but I should be able to carry a gun and shoot people. Uh, okay, anyways. Like, you realize that in the United States of America, gun violence is the number one cause of death for children and teens. The number one cause of death for children and teens is gun violence. And you're sitting here crying about people getting abortions? but you're excited about less gun restrictions. If you were really pro-life, you would push to regulate guns. You would push to see less guns. You would not be trying to regulate uteruses. Uteri? Uteruses. I don't know what the... Mm, I'll get back to you on that one. But you would not be trying to regulate uteruses. You'd be trying to regulate guns, which are the number one cause of death for teens and children in the United States of America. You are not pro-life, you are pro-birth. You do not care what happens to these children once they leave that uterus. Clearly, because you are so gung-ho for the guns that are killing your children. There are more mass shootings in America than there are days. That's all I will say. Millions of babies, potentially are going to be saved. And this is this is just very, very, very exciting news. Um, one thing that I want to encourage everybody to do is pray that the women who are going to find themselves without the option to get out of their pregnancy and without the option to kill their children, that they find joy in motherhood, that they find peace with I mean, they're the ones who got pregnant, so I mean, it, it, it is what it is, right? But, you know, women had this option before in many states that they, they could just go and get in, and end it and, and get rid of their responsibility. Pray for them that they find the joy in motherhood. It's hard. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, it's very hard, but it's very, very, very 
rewarding and it's the best thing anybody could experience and just pray that they find that as well and they realize that they never needed abortion in the first place. I think that's something that women might end up realizing coming from this is that women who thought they might have gotten an abortion and maybe Missouri where it's, where it's now illegal, they come to find out that, oh my gosh, I never needed this. I'm so glad that I did not have this option because now, now I have a precious baby and I never needed it in the first place because I'm strong enough to be a mother and I'm smart enough and everything's going to be okay. Um, which, you know, as you guys know, this is my first video since um, giving birth to my baby and... Caitlin, I am so glad that motherhood has been wonderful for you, you privileged white woman. And I'm sitting here as a privileged white woman also saying this, but you're really just have strength. We'll, pr we'll pray for you guys who don't have that choice anymore. Are your prayers and strength going to fix the baby formula shortage that the Republicans voted to not fund? Yeah, because the, the Republican Party that you love so much voted against providing a $28 million aid to the baby formula shortage. You really think that your prayers and just having a mom be strong and push through is going to help a mother who doesn't have universal health care, who has to go through a birth that can cost anywhere from like $4,000 to $15,000, not to mention the price of having severe complications while in the hospital. A birth alone can put someone in severe bankruptcy. Oh no, but, but your prayers and, and, and their strength are, are really going to fix no universal childcare, no guaranteed maternal or paternal leave, the highest maternal mortality rate in the world. Black people who give birth have a two to three times higher mortality rate than white people who give birth. Medical racism is very real. But no, 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 like your prayers and like just telling them to like be strong, ooh, like minimum wage will not even give you quality of life. You don't realize that these abortion laws predominantly affect low income people. Rich people are gonna get abortions whether you like it or not. They'll go to a different state uh, because they can afford to. They'll go to a different country if they need to. This doesn't affect the 1%. This doesn't affect rich people. This doesn't affect even more like middle class, upper class people. This affects low income people. And it highly affects people of color. As I mentioned, medical racism and so on and so forth. So you are pushing impoverished people to give birth to a child they cannot afford to take care of. Not everyone can sit on YouTube and make money, Caitlin. Not everyone has a Patreon like you and me. Not everyone is as privileged as you and I. And I'm sure there's a lot of things you've gone through in your life that were not great, as have I. I've been through a lot of things in my life. That does not mean that I do not have that. If I had a child right now, I would have support from my family, from friends. I have a roof over my head. I'm able to take time off work. I, I have so much privilege in terms of that. Not everyone has that. I have people who could take care of my child while I went to school or work. People who don't have, who can't afford childcare. Childcare is very expensive. In the United States, I, I think it's approximately like $14,000 a year. Childcare, feeding a child, housing a child, even birthing a child, medical costs. God forbid your child have any sort of medical complications. It is a lot of money. And when you live in a country that doesn't provide proper minimum wage, where minimum wage is leaving you below the poverty line, you are literally putting your life and your child's life at risk just to give birth to that child. But God forbid you want an abortion. God forbid you actually want to bring a child into this world that's wanted and taken care of. Because what happens when you can't take care of a child? You give it up for adoption, you put it in foster care. And a lot of kids that end up going up for adoption end up in foster care. And let's talk about foster care for a second. Because you people go on for days about being pro-life, but you're not pro-life, you're pro-birth. 
because you don't want to see a child actually brought into this world and taken care of. Because right now in the United States of America, there's over 400,000 kids in foster care and they are at an extremely high risk of experiencing mental and physical health problems. And they're at an extremely high risk of being neglected and abused. Did you know that in America, approximately like 50% of homeless people and prison inmates can be traced back to the foster care system. You cannot be pro-life unless you support these children's lives on a systemic level. And if you're voting Republican, I can tell you right now, you are not supporting children's lives on a systemic level and you are not pro-life. You wanna see a child born, but not given a quality of life. And that's disgusting. But uh, yeah, and, and I'll end on this, I'll end on this. All the years that I've spent and other pro-life activists have, sp have spent trying to tell people you can't kill a baby. You, you can't kill a baby conceived out of rape. You can't kill a baby because they might grow up poor. You can't kill a baby because the mom is too young. All of that doesn't matter now. We don't, we don't have to stress that to people now. We don't have to stress that right now. We can take a break. Oh my God, I'm actually flabbergasted. She did not just say that. I, need, I actually need to go back one second because the mom is too young. Oh my God, imagine telling a 12 year old. Sucks to suck, I guess. A baby conceived out of our word. Are you serious? That hurts my heart, truly. No one should have to. And that hurts even more because she's spoken in videos in the past. I don't obviously want to share her business or anything, but she's spoken about it in videos that she's been essayed. And so have I. And the fact that we are two women who have been through something like that and something was done to us that is outside of our, our choice and our consent, that you'd, you'd think someone like that would, would support a woman taking back her consent and her choice. If something like that happened to a woman, God forbid you force her again to have something without her consent. Oh, that makes me so upset. And at any age, really, you're never too young. You're never too young to give birth. You can't even solve complex math equations yet, but you haven't even hit grade eight yet, but have that baby. Are we serious right now? At any age, it doesn't matter how you got pregnant. It doesn't matter if it was your dad. It doesn't matter if it was a stranger. It doesn't matter if you consented or not. According to Caitlin Bennett, you have to have that baby. I could go into a million pro-life arguments about, I mean, I have all the arguments, right? You know, cause I've argued this my whole life. I used to be pro-life. So I've obviously grown from that and had to figure out my own reasoning and my own arguments as to why I am so against the pro-life movement. I'm very much pro-choice now. And it's, it, you are not killing a baby. You're not. You're terminating a fetus. A fetus, and I know the pro-life, the pro-lifers hate when I say this, a fetus is a parasite. The scientific term for a, a fetus is a parasite. It's a parasitic relationship. That is not a life on its own. And the birth giver should have full precedent always. Now I'm not gonna get into all those, if you want another video where I get into all those arguments, I totally can. But forcing a person to give birth, I truly believe at the end of the day, whether or not you wanna argue the morality of, of terminating a pregnancy, not terminating a pregnancy, ending a life, whatever you want to argue, I don't even care about that. In a world that's overpopulated, the earth is dying and so many people cannot afford mentally, physically, financially to support a child. And beyond that, a child should never be brought into this world where it's not wanted. Those are my main four arguments. Forget the whole, is it a life? Is it not a life? Ethically, if we're talking about morality and ethics, Bringing a child into the world where it will be traumatized, neglected, abused. You think that is more moral. You have some serious, serious issues. If you think it is more moral to force a woman to give birth 
to a child where it's not wanted, in a world where it, it cannot be afforded, where it's going to be neglected, abused, traumatized. If you think that is more moral than terminating pregnancy, you actually are dense. And I don't want to talk to you. And that's all I have to say on this. I'm not even going to watch the rest of her video because I'm actually pissed off at this point. The fact that I actually wasn't pissed off until the very end there. Really? SA victims? Really? Like kids? Teenagers? Where was it? For, I forget which state, but there was a state recently that because you need, in that state specifically, you need parental permission in order to terminate the pregnancy. That, that's their abortion rules. And she's 16 years old and she has no parents because she's in foster care or something like that. And they will not allow her to get an abortion. A 16 year old girl in foster care, no parents. You think she can afford to have a child? Like it's, it's actually insane. No universal health care, no universal child care, no paid paternal maternal leave, highest maternity mortality rate, even higher for black people, foster care system, busting out the seams and you're forcing women or people with uteruses to give birth. It's unfathomable. It's truly disgusting. And I'm, I'm sad for America and I hope something can be done about it eventually. It's crazy to me that 28 to 30% of the population support what the Supreme Court did. And the rest of America is like, huh? Like, I think even some pro-life people are like, oh, okay. I think we can let the dying women ha with their atopic pregnancies maybe have the medical abortion. Like, are we, are we seriously this? Anyways, I need to stop talking about it because this video is going to be like 50 minutes long. I can't believe she said that. Like, truly, truly, any age, really? <laughs> Okay, anyways. Anyways, um, that is my video. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry I've been gone for so long. Sorry I keep saying that I'm coming back and then I don't. But I'm hopefully back now. Um, someone sent me this video. So if you have any other video suggestions you want me to react to, if you have any other videos you want me to do, any video ideas, leave them down below because this video was sent to me by one of my subscribers and I was told to react to it. So. That's why this video is here. So if you guys have any ideas for me, I would love to make them for you. Um, but that's all for this video. I forgot to say, remember to like, comment, and subscribe down below because you know I appreciate that so much. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.